about escapism, how you want to get out of your own life because it's so mundane and boring that you just can't stand it. I can't stand this anymore. Let's get out of here. Let's start the intro already. So I'm Dan. And I'm Nick, folks. We're old friends dissecting one topic at a time. People, technology, media, we've got it all covered. Each discussion here is a deep dive into our unique perspective. The taboo, the bitten subjects, they're all on the chopping block, baby. We don't pander to popular opinion, we might even get a little bit dirty. Warning, this podcast may contain mature language and sexual content, and is for infotainment purposes only. So join us, have a good time. Open up your ear holes, because we're going to fondle your follicles. Yo, we're live. We're into this. Baby. I'm feeling better than I thought I would. I woke up at uh snap into it. Yeah. Like Slim Jim. Oh crack, crack, crack. I woke up at 3 30 this morning and did not sleep since. Have not slept since. Really? Part of yeah, part of having a new kid. That's what you that's why you look like that. Yeah. <laughs> new baby'll make you pretty tired, make you pretty stressed. I've seen that shirt in a previous episode too. Oh uh, yeah. It's a video yeah. game. Making you want to escape. Yeah, I... <laughs> <sighs> well, the stress today. We're well, really going to yeah. be talking about getting away from stuff because you need to get away from. I stuff. I need to get away from some stuff. I, actually, my son and I, we both have the same method of getting away from things. Mm. We hit the bottle. We hit it hard. <laughs> and oh, Dr. Wait, Brown's baby bottles. Props. He came with props. This yeah. guy's good. They're they're pretty good. You know, I didn't want to become a, <laughs> a colic, so Dr. Brown's has a special little. Oh, let me undo this little piece here. It has a blue little. Wow. Little straw in the middle that just sucks the air out of whatever you're drinking for babies. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it also has multiple parts cut that makes on, it really confusing cut too. Burps. Cut down on burps. Huh? Uh huh. Uh huh. And it's an IQ test too for people who've never used a baby bottle before. They never get it right. <laughs> All my have relatives. You, uh, have you been checking that bad boy for mold? You know, every extra part of a baby bottle pretty much grows mold. Yeah, actually. I've got a tiny little filter thing that just goes in the little pipe cleaner. It's a tiny, hey, little, it's a tiny little one. Gets the nip. Weird. Yeah, so uh not your first nipple, right? Um no, but have you had have you tried breast milk before? Was that breast milk? Yeah, well I didn't have any heavy cream, so I had to substitute. Is that really breast milk? Yeah. Have you never okay. tried breast milk before? I've sipped it, but not like mm. It's rather oily. Wow. Oilier owl? Oilier, <laughs> Oilier owl. owl. Yeah. Oilier owl. <laughs> Oh, yeah. As we say, uh, a good tongue twister will get mm-hmm. you started. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what they say, right? Yes, I guess you got to push the envelope, huh? Yeah, you know if your if your wife's gushing, you make a white Russian. Cause we got some excess breast milk here, you got to use it up. Damn, my man is on fire tonight. I don't even know what to say. Ooh, yeah, see that nice little. Oh. No. Oh yeah. Get ready for That's it. Not really breast milk. It's fantastic. This is good stuff, man. That's- I can't really breast milk. Yeah. It's the most expensive drink because you can't buy breast milk. I yes, mean, you can. a life of indulgence right here. Oh my god, you can buy breast milk. You can buy breast milk on the black market. You can probably buy it on the not black market. Can't you? I give you until next episode to buy breast milk on the black market. <laughs> quality breast milk. breast milk. On my own. Oh, wait. Define quality. <laughs> High the fat individual. percentage. You got the individual or their milk? I want a background check on this breast milk. I don't want some yeah. Im- uh, immature uh, quality. Like high school GPA. Yeah. I want some numbers here. Ooh. Maybe some fitness endurance tests. You're mixing so you, that bad boy up. Yeah, wow. you gotta make sure you get the baby spoon. Uh, with the baby spoon. Damn. Yeah, I know you're missing a, a stir. Ooh. I don't use straws anymore, actually. Oh. Oh, no, that's so delicious. Really? Mm. Did you really do that? I'm still <laughs> trying to figure out the song. <laughs> <laughs> He's pulling our line, folks. But ah, uh, that's good. I didn't. I don't remember. Man, white Russians are delicious. Don't drink, folks, and prevent don't colic. Don't listen to the podcast. Hmm. <laughs> 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 so some people escape using alcohol, drugs, or medications that, that make them happy. I don't know if that's a good idea. It's probably a bad. Idea. A bad idea. 
Yeah. Got uh you want me to start with the definition here? Sure. Let's do the definition, even though I did want to bring okay. up something that makes me not want to escape my life. Sure. Escapism is the avoidance of unpleasant, boring, arduous, scary, or banal aspects of daily life. Daily mm. life. Uh, it can also be used as a term to de define the actions people take to relieve persistent feelings of depression or general sadness, a.k.a. daily life. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be reiterated a lot, the day-to-day, -day, <laughs> the mundane, the boring. Mm-hmm. Wow, interesting. So you're telling me anything I do to distract myself from my own life is escapism? Mm -hmm. That extra minute you spend in the toilet stall? Escapist. Yeah. What about when I'm playing a video game? Hmm. How long have you been playing the video game? Do you, do you play it to like, get away? No, like are you, 10 hours a day. Are you learning and having fun and growing and being stimulated? I mean, it's a sex game, but I play it ten hours a day. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, mm. I, I'd say I'm pretty engorged by the end. Is that escape? Heavily, heavily, heavily stimulated. I'm damn it. Mm -hmm. You son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't want to talk about your penis because I aren't all the video games uh, escapism. Aren't all movies escapism? If we break it down, isn't everything escapism? Pretty much is survival. Yeah, if it's I mean, not survival, it's escapism. <laughs> is that what you're getting at? How many people escape to their daily life? None, right? Yeah, I can't wait to take the daily commute. Oh, man, this just lets me get up. <laughs> ah, I don't know, a little bit. Wake little me up bit. before you go, go. Yeah, I don't... knows those words, that's why. I didn't want to sing them. But if I kept singing, I would have had them. <laughs> they would have came out of nowhere. Mm. Just mm. like Nick. Just like me. <laughs> Uh, but there's yeah there's a good and a bad so your my definition of playing video games usually it's a good version of escapism whereas the bad <laughs> it's good I'm for other smart. people all other I people aspects. um weird so i just want to give you my smirk not hmm. smile no it's a smile oh god that's good go ahead so I shaved and I got this like razor burn because I never shave all the way. Yeah, did you use um the white, whatever you call it? Oh, uh, gel, whatever. Yeah, but mm -hmm. it's like a really old electric breast milk. Yeah, yeah, breast milk. That'll that'll ease the rash. I use it for everything. It probably would. I need to get some booby milk. Yeah, <laughs> black market. Here we come. Black market, baby. So, I never shave all the way to the to the skin. Mm -hmm. I always just kind of do the whole trim it down to like here, so it's like five o'clock shadow all the time. Yeah, yeah, That's you're trying to be luck. ultra smooth. Trying to be ultra smooth. Have the uh, follow up interview. We know we talked about yeah. job interviews. You should have done laser so hair good. removal. I should have, except that I never would have grown it back. Ultra smooth. Ultra smooth for life, baby. <laughs> yeah. But I went to um CVS because right before this podcast started, I realized I didn't have computer paper. I needed computer paper to print my resume. Ray, uh, like resume. That. That's what's called. Resume. Um, so I went to CVS and young girl, like 24, 22, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. She's all right. Yeah, I could tell like she was like just finishing school. Yeah. You know, Educated a little bit. Asian American cute. Okay, she was right. putting toothbrush. I made a couple jokes to her. I said, hey, blah, blah, blah. you want me to help you with the toothbrush? I was just being nice and she laughed and then i said uh anyway i got my stuff because she said call me when you're ready to ring up because she was nighttime so i went over and like she was like flustered and i just wanted to give her my stuff and uh she said oh my god and your hair is that natural and i said no no, no, no. or did you dye that and i said no, no no it's natural she said wow and i was like no one says wow i think she's wooing me here did she and ask said, to touch it no, and then I said, uh, I used to be a camp counselor, a five-year-olds, and uh, I told them it was bird poop, and they called me Counselor Bird Poop, <laughs> which is a true story, yeah. They called me Nikki Bird Poop, but, you know, I didn't need to tell her my first name. Hmm. And she laughed, and uh, she said, anyway, the total comes to whatever, and I handed her the bills, and she just punched the button, 
and she hit enter and register open and she closed it and she handed me a receipt she's like have a great day and i was like do i get my whoa change? whoa i was like do I, I was like do i get my change and she was like oh my god i'm so sorry and she like she was like i'm so and i was like oh yeah you were <laughs> So I'm taking credit for it, but she must not have been able to see my bumps here. She was probably uh, looking at here. Yeah. Wow. I flustered her up, dude. She she didn't even give me change. She just totally closed the drawer and smiled at me. And I was like, uh Unbelievable. Didn't get back? That never I happens. Know. Yeah. So that brings us to our second most biggest uh, uh escapist uh, strategy is women. People really? believe that women are in love with them and they're in love with the idea of women. Which brings me to my smirk. Mm. Fellas, you ever been sleeping there? Lying in your own business? Dreaming? Sleeping? Doing whatever the hell it is when we're asleep? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a breast milk, man. I know. Can't stop. And you're just... I'm so addicted to it. Sitting there, you're dreaming, you're doing whatever. It's like 2 a.m. And your girl wakes you up. What are you doing? And I said, I'm sleeping. Is something wrong? Yeah. Uh, you you're wiping the stuff mm. out of your eyes. Is something wrong? Trying to get a train of thought going. No, no, no. Anyway, she says no, and then you're back to sleep. Whatever, no big deal. So then you wake up uh, for your alarm clock. You gotta go to work. Blah blah blah. And she rolls over and she says, "Who's Moira?" And I was like, <laughs> "Or Mora?" And I was like, "Excuse me." You kept saying Mora, and you were pleased with her in your sleep. And I was like. I don't even know Amora. Like, I don't know. Was it Italian? Was I saying Amora? Full of love. And then I said, maybe it's the Overwatch character, Moira, because I've been playing Overwatch. But uh-huh. I was like, and I tried to explain this to her. I was like, but I never pick Moira. All the girls to the right, <laughs> like the attack women, I've never picked them. Like, I pick Pharaoh, and I was trying to explain this to her at like 6 a.m. I was like, I'll pick Pharaoh and Bridget. But I don't pick Moira and the sniper girl and the other girl and there's another girl. I, I really never picked them. They're just I would never even be them. It's a waste of my time. Yeah. And she was like, "Who's Moira?" <laughs> and I was like, and "You don't get it. It's got to be wrong." Anyway, she was mad at me, and I was like, "All right, see you, babe." And she was like, "Hmm." For a name in your sleep. But yeah, maybe a name in my sleep. I don't even know. But that reminded me of um, my favorite thing of like sitcoms ever is like if like a guy and a girl are sleeping next to each other, and the uh, the girl's awake and the guy's smiling and he says a girl's name, and she whacks him real hard, mm-hmm. and he's like, "What did I do?" And she's like, "You know what you did." <laughs> it's like what? Another That's woman. Not fair. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, "Wait a minute. That's not what happened here." So, that's my smirk. Hmm. Women, folks. Women. Um, Am I right, right guys? Mm-hmm. We I'm right, to, guys. We need to talk about that in a future episode. Women? We're going to get in trouble. Let's just do an episode where we literally get broken up with. <laughs> we break up with our women at the same time. Well, we, we say the worst things we could, and then like by the end of the episode, we're like, well, that was an air for a month and a half. <laughs> yeah. I've got That's three, three months before she breaks up, up with me. Yeah. <laughs> for this air. Hmm. 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 Sorry, my smirk and smile are both involve women, so Yeah, that's a good escape. One of which isn't real, and one of which works at CBS, I guess. One you yeah, I guess two you escape to and one you escape from. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. How's that breast milk? Yeah. How's that breast milk? Delicious. So you were okay. sleeping. I guess that's one escape from life, but everyone needs that's to sleep. Natural you oh. can't escape. That's part of life. That's not getting out of bed is, is an escapist strategy. Oh, uh, is it? Yeah, same with... Uh, Escapism sounds a lot like depression. Yeah, well, they link it together for some reason. But people like... Uh, who who wrote uh, children's novels? I want to say Mostly? Louis C.K., but that's not right. <laughs> C.S. Lewis. He... C.S. Lewis. Somebody did. Oh, was C.S. Lewis? Yeah. Oh, uh, like not... Um... The other Lewis. Yeah. I'm thinking Lewis Black. No, yeah, yeah. Well, I think Lewis he might have actually, though. But he, I mean, he he was making fun of the remarks that it was negative. He was saying that it, it's an imagine uh, it's a creative expression of reality. So it's it's an essential. It kind of is. I mean, you have to imagine. That's why kids imagine. Think of 
all the games and things kids play with. It's all imagination. If you don't have imagination, you don't go somewhere else, you will be sucked dry of this boring, awful reality we call life, right? Yeah, I like to think that my child, he's only two, but it probably continues until they're like at least 12, that they have no idea of what reality is. So their entire existence is escapism. Totally like, they don't until they are old enough to have a kid. Think of that. <laughs> You're a child until you you have a child. I mean, not really, but think of how if you could go back in time to when you didn't have a kid, let's say five, six years ago, with the knowledge and everything in your brain right now, and you did it, like you don't have a choice. You just went back and you did it, and now you don't have a kid? Responsibilities. Ugh. How much free time and like just... Wasted ugh. time. I'd waste so much time doing BS. Nothing. Who cares? It would be awesome, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. You could Dude, just leave you the could... house whenever you wanted. Oh my god, you go on vacation. You go somewhere. You oh. can go anywhere. You can just drive somewhere and not worry about anything. How crazy is that? Until the next morning when you have to go to your job, which is the next responsibility after children. Yeah, it kinda is. It goes job, children. Well you get the yeah. job first and then you stop clinking your breast milk thing, man. It's just You can't focus. Me. I know it is. It is distracting me. Hope people see that on the stream. <laughs> <laughs> They're streaming alright. Oh yeah. Hmm. So have you ever seen uh, Walter Mitty, Secret Life of Walter Mitty? I have. That was actually a well done movie. Yeah, I liked it quite a bit. I didn't love the movie, but it was well done, and I liked you know yeah. the whole idea of it. He's an escapist daydreamer who can't focus on reality. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think so. That's a good way to put it. I like that version. Just as a kid, I used to daydream all the time just to get out of the monotony. Like on the bus to school. Weird. Uh, what was your daydream on the bus? Um, it was, uh, I think it was Last Action Hero, where they were like Karate Kid kind of, right? Where what? I'm trying to figure out what you're... Like the character in it, the kid was like, he was doing like karate part of it, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I would imagine him running beside the bus and doing karate kicks and stuff. Like to nobody? To me. I was just showing off because I was on the bus to school. Oh, mine were way cooler. Oh, let's hear. When we had church back in Ransom, oh. I'll tell you the name. I think they shut Jesus it down. come off the cross. No, nah, they had the real big thing behind the tabernacle that was like thirty feet high. Mm -hmm. It was like made of a like fall down and crush the priest. No, I imagine terrorists broke in through the sky. Oh, that's it, the best. And yeah, they rappel down ropes, and then they they had guns like super machine guns, and that they would try and. They would come from the exits behind us, mm. and they would rappel down the big Jesus statue, and they would just scream at everybody to get down. And I always figured a way because with there's like forty pews, forty pews, and forty pews, I would get down and crawl and find my way back to like one of the exits back there. And then I start kicking some terrorist ass one at a time, and then like maybe I get a gun. I don't you get know. in the loft area. You start playing the organ oh, and firing knows, bullets. Man, it's a little bit like Die Hard, I guess. Was I too young to have seen Die Hard? There's Your no parents way I wouldn't allow it. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Maybe I created Die Hard in my head or my heart. Maybe. Did you have the one where like water was coming from the floor and you had to find an escape? Do you, do you think about that one? Not a lot, but sometimes. Sometimes. Because mm -hmm. you have a fear of drowning. Um, Maybe. Or the one where like the house is no longer vertical. It's like on its side. It's like rotating. Oh, that's a cool one. That's cool. Mm, that's a good one. We used to pretend even just playing um, outside games with the other kids. Mm -hmm. Like, the floor is lava. Tag or manhunt. No, no, no. Like, just a game that already has rules. Like, manhunt or cops and robbers or tag or any of those kind of games. That you're like hiding, you're, like, uh. Yeah, like in a real deep brush. And you're, like, camouflaged in your head. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're Rambo. Or, uh. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Predator. And you're gonna. I mean, I killed, like, six kids. It was my grandmom's neighbors. I snapped their necks. <laughs> and, uh, as a as a very strong six year old. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I was I was really strong, and I was in the moment when the judge uh, approached me. I said escapism. He said it's no big deal. It happens, so they let me go. Escapist. Shout out Judge Wapner. Wapner. <laughs> That's way back. It's before Judge Judy, I think. She hates men. I don't know. 
I she does. She does. I thought she hated I don't care. life. I mean, she she also hates young people, which I kind of do too now. She hates every anyone who's not her. And idiots. That's a good point. She's old and a woman, and she hates <laughs> idiots. So she's probably. I'm not saying she's she is an old woman, but she likes older people and women, and people who aren't dopes. Yes. 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 Yo, I saw the funniest. I don't even know if it came up on the podcast. There's a Judge Judy clip where uh, a defendant and they're like 25, 30 range. And it's my ex boyfriend. I kicked him out. I need money for the rent. He took the car, blah, 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 blah. And she says, Well, how does it implicate that he's your ex? How long have you guys been separated? I don't understand. You're living together. And she says, Well, we ain't been together in over a year judge i just want him to pay this bill and um she looks at them both and she says when's the last time you both did the whoopee or she says something like old for when you guys mm-hmm. had sex you know rock casper and, yeah the funniest thing is he he just looks at the judge he looks at her he goes this morning <laughs> and, he goes double guns, and she's like oh. <laughs> she doesn't know what to say because it must have been like a spur of the moment like heated passion thing that happens <laughs> after a while <laughs> totally just ran her over with a bus and she was like oh. you gotta look that clip up but I don't know how you would look it up but it'll be good for, all the, for the audience when they I'm, have free time. I'm sure I can add a yeah. link if it's copyright free but I doubt it's copyright free. She's making a boatload of yeah. money and that's probably where it comes from. Suckers playing her clips on podcasts. Well then we ain't don't even look it up. We ain't no dumb dumbs. <laughs> we ain't getting bringing it into her court. Can you imagine? <laughs> You idiots! Why are you recording this? Your mother's basements? Get a job! When was the last time you two? Hey. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. All right. So escapism is crazy because it's good, but it's also bad. Depends how how you're using the escapism. So, like when I was fourteen, fifteen, I really had nothing to do. So I played a game called EverQuest. And EverQuest, mm. it, it gave a structure where you could build your character, but that didn't that's endless. And then there's some social aspect to it, but really, not really. You don't really, it was just typing. But the best parts about it, the parts I really gravitated, gravitated to were the, so the levels were like really in depth. And there were some that had like mazes in the very beginning. And you have to figure out the maze in order to get to the next level, like the next area. And it's usually like deep within something or hidden away or it was just like isolated. So I, I really gravitated to those areas and just spent most of my time like underneath like stories of dirt or like in a faraway courtyard that no one else ever went to. I found my little piece, my little island. Hmm. See, I never played it, so I don't understand the format or whatever. I'd like to, in my brain, see how it plays out. I have to see it. I mean, it's I, like- I could view it. Role playing game where you just kill stuff and pick up the items, right, but it was but like a very person, third person. Like what was you going could on? switch between them. You're okay. essentially a warrior and you just run around killing stuff. So you can go into these little levels and like you're supposed to gather up things and screw that. I would just like go to one spot and kill the same thing over and over again because I felt really comfortable there. And nobody can get in my safe spot. It's my secret place. Your escapism. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I do that a lot in video games. I wonder if I do that in video games. I don't know that other people do that. Like, I would find the nook and cranny. Like, there was nooks and crannies. So there's a... <laughs> there's, a, like, crooks different... And na- oh, my God. Crooks and That'd nannies. Great. Yeah, crooks and nannies would be my new... Uh, uh, if you're going to a pub and you play Quizzo. Quizzo group name. Hmm. Crooks and nannies. Anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. That's okay. So I'd find like little areas that would just like you'd get away. That's all. There's no way I could explain it. There's no way I could share my feelings for it because it was just like a a personal space. Because I had to be able to see the world without people actually getting to me and I'd just like watch them go by. I like it. Hmm, yeah. So like the English muffin of gaming. <laughs> what does that mean? Nooks and crannies. Oh, nooks like and crannies. Oh, okay. English. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, makes sense, right? Yeah. I guess my question to you is, what do you escape from? What did you escape from when you were younger? Just boring stuff. 
I guess whether you're smart or dumb or athletic or unathletic or tall or fat or whatever, like you kind of start to figure out that maybe life sort of is monotonous and sucky oftentimes. Because no matter what you are, you're not everything. Like you can't be in the fat club, you can't be in the athletic club, you can't be cool, you can't be rich, you can't be in the, the poor kids that hate the rich kids, you can't be in every group at once. So you're you're going to kind of be excluded. You're going to kind of find yourself on the outside in a lot of scenarios in life. I yeah, mean, and you could I would agree. You could do the status quo and just join the one or two or three groups that really define you, but I find that boring too. Yeah, I guess one of my goals in life is to do everything. So I, I yeah, mean, I might not be. I would love to do more things. I might not be extremely proficient at certain things, but I still experience them and you try them. Be able to, yeah, try it, do it, maybe get good a little good at it. You don't have to get great at it, but you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I think that's what escape escapism is kind of about. It's about getting on off the beaten path. It's about trying something different, like immersing yourself in a different environment or going to a different place. Yeah, because what else is life? I mean, really serious people who are fairly boring can be very successful and lead important lives and do good things, but I I couldn't do that. So like a, a CEO of a company that's an asshole, he made himself an asshole to get up there? I'm not going to say he's an asshole, but let's say he's pretty boring. He's, yeah, and he never did empty. Anything weird or His happiness fun. is yeah. not there. Hmm. Is that what we're saying? Soulless. He's never immersed yeah. himself in a different Soulless experience. Son of a bitch. Yeah, people without imagination are kind of weird. I don't like it. I see that every day. Where there's a woman in my office that never looks up when I walk past her, <laughs> and I th- I think to myself like, ever. is that is that me? I mean, but it's got to be her. Like, there's got to be like, why would you never acknowledge people? You're in your either in your own little world escaping. Or you are so present in your world that you can't deal with your anxieties. So you're, you're. I guess you're escaping by looking down, not All acknowledging right, so people. Question: Is there a possibility she's more imaginative than both of us, and she's pretending she's elsewhere while she's at her desk? Like she's crap. Yeah, it's possible, maybe. Right? It's yeah. I doubt. I, I doubt it. But yeah. let, let, let's let's assume it's possible. Then would it go to say that everyone is equally as imaginative? They just do it in different ways. I don't know. Ways that other people can't pick up. They don't perceive. Yeah, I don't know. Like, as a really dumb jock who's like, oh, I throw the football for the team. I'm real good at He's sports. really imaginative about how a football feels <laughs> or looks. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's just, <laughs> he's football things that I will never be able to imagine. And he's like, he's just. Like, how really do you think. Well. I don't know. Like, a, I'm going to bring up Tom Brady because he has won several Super he Bowls. Did the and yeah. He won. Do you think he yeah, he he knows a football better than other people? Like he must have a sense of the football that other people just don't have. I guess so. I mean, if you do something enough, you have weird senses that you don't plan on. He actually probably has weird senses about uh, pressure coming from different directions. A little like, like he's wind. The ball for three seconds. No, like pressure from other team. Mm. Like without looking, he can almost tell by the sound of the cleats and maybe his own offensive lineman that someone's breaking through the line and maybe has a hand near the back of him. There's he's no like way a, he could see that hand. He's a Jedi. He almost feel it. Yeah, a little bit. Just from a million different cues that he might not even be aware of. And he knows, I just got to dump the ball or I got to get rid of it or my safety valve or I got to do whatever. There's stuff like that, I think, that comes with doing something proficient for a long amount of time. You pick up on subtle cues you're not even aware of. Now, is that escapism? I forget why we got into it. Yeah, I don't think that's escapism, but that's... <laughs> it's not, but... It's, I guess, the way cool. people perceive things and the the perception of other people people's escapes. Yeah, I could see that. I think that also goes with the negativity associated with escapism, is that I mean, the people that are withdrawn, maybe they're not feeling good, maybe they're not happy, but, I mean, I could be perceived as a wallflower and withdrawn until you really start talking to me, and then it's like, oh, he's fine. Like, wh- why did I ever think he was crazy? <laughs> 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 yeah. And then I found his podcast. <laughs> yeah. And then I knew he was insane. Mm. Mm. But 
you could be completely I, normal is a weird word to use because no one is actually mm -hmm. normal but i mean you could be completely harmless and enjoying life and people could perceive the wrong thing just because you're not actively engaged in whatever stupid you're thing right. they're doing there's, there's a thing with kids nowadays i find even my own son mm -hmm. it's like there's an escapist thing here where they want to watch their favorite movie show ipad whatever because it's familiar that's what they're used to yeah well the I want to watch again, cars again, man. Daddy. I want to watch cars. I want to watch cars. You just watch cars. cars. Why do you want to watch cars again? Because I can only say cars one and three. That's all we got. No, you don't got two. I need to get two. Mm. Please, just for something. Lord, just for something different. Save me. Different, <laughs> different um, for the record, two was a deviation of the series, and it went off on Mater. It focuses on Mater, and it's huh. really bad. Oh, that's but why. it's also a spy movie, but it's fine. I mean, it's just something different. I'm not watching any of them for their movie value. I, I wonder if I took a picture of Lightning McQueen and just went, <laughs> and I just like had nope. it left and right with the kid by it. Nope, nope. They'd figure it out. Play like Cars. And he'd be like, yeah, Daddy, but it's not Cars. Yeah. No, it's no. different. It's different. Shut up. But anyway, they, um, when I was a kid, which is a an expression that sounds stupid when you say it, but when you really think about it, mm -hmm. well, I mean, I couldn't control when was on, what was on when. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, you had to open so up the TV guide. The Turtles. I had to wait to figure out when the turtles were on, and then <laughs> hope it wasn't just a rerun, which it was ninety percent of the time. And then, like, just so you, like your impulses were squashed. You couldn't, yeah. you couldn't get immediate gratification. That's what the no, word you're looking for. If I if I could have, I'm sure I would have and turned out to be a jerk or whatever, but now this generation kind of is immediately gratified. I just hit a button that starts the show up or the movie up, almost any movie they want. Right? Does that make them more likely to be escapists or less likely since they I experience think more it? Because they they want to go back to it. Like, if they want to watch it eight times, and then, like, later on, you're like, hey, let's go do something else. And they were like, hey, I want to do X or Y. And you're like, oh, well, we did X or Y. Why do you want to do that again? Well, because it's their favorite. And they have a choice, they think. Hmm. I mean, sometimes you have to just stop them. But Do you think you naturally burn out? So this is the video game thing, is that there are many video games that I played that were essentially endless, like Clash of Clans. So you could keep playing Clash of Clans as long as you damn well please, and you would never beat the game. You would never have a finish. The same thing with EverQuest. You probably you could never beat it. There's no ending. If Cal if Callie's watching right now, do you think he's still playing? Uh, he is still playing. No, uh, I can guarantee it. I checked last week. <laughs> okay, nice. Uh, did you? Yeah. Every every you? few months. Wait, no, did I, they see you? No, no, I don't join. I don't join back into that group. I don't want to get addicted to Wait, it. So how do you? Oh, you just looked at the. Uh, I look to see like if they have a. Our a group. Lit, yeah, if they have if they're rated, that means they've played recently within the last like month or something. Nice. They're all rated. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's so funny. there's a there's a piece of it that like you get, you buy into the game that you're building yourself, which is really fake. If it's a facade, it's but, really for uh, all games are fake if you want to break it down. But let's. Yeah, yeah. In this particular way, it's endless, mm -hmm. so it's really, really a facade. Diminishing returns. Yeah. You could say there's a social aspect to it, which there definitely is. There's an enjoyable... There was. There, yeah, until we left. And then there's the piece where you're just doing it because it's a compulsion. And the compulsion part is bit. where it's not good for you. So you hear the music, but the music is addictive. The colors are very bright. Like, even if you're... I remember trying to fall asleep and like looking at the game and I'd wake up immediately because it was like bright green. You had like birds flitting and like golden whatever. Mm -hmm. You would immediately be sucked into the game and you'd be taken to a different place. Wavelengths, baby. Woo! Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I guess that's bad because you're you're also um doing it because you've already been doing it. Yeah. I think I like played you put so much into it I can't stop now. I think I, the idea. I played EverQuest for over 100 days. Like the time spent on that game while actually playing it, 100 days worth. So that is literally... You have to work it out. That's... You're saying 24,000 hours? 
Uh, 24,000. What is 10 days and hours? Is that 100 days? No, 100 days and, yeah. Two 2,400 hours. You said 100. Okay, 24. Yeah, 2,400 yeah. hours. So that's, yeah. I'm going to do some math here. If you had four hours a day. Let's say two hours a day, because that's more realistic. I'll make sure uh, I'm not getting text. Panders are live. Oh, great. That's good. So that is three, almost three and a half years of playing the game two hours a day every day. Wow. That's a bit excessive. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a bit. Well, if you're gleaning something from it, I mean, how is, is it more damaging than um, working a job seven hours a day or five days a week? Think of that. Well, a job at that age. So this is the this is the key well, that makes oh, okay. it fair. It's an age, okay. yeah. Because I could have worked that much time in a job that paid me six bucks an hour, and that would be completely worthless. I would have actually. I I don't think I would have been influenced by games, by programming, by logically thinking things through, planning. Because like the way I played that game was mechanical in a way, because I played it so much that I would like set timers. Timers would go off. I jump on just so I could jump kill this one thing, and like I, it okay. would. The game manipulated me to do that, but it also made me more uh, machine-like, <laughs> which is my end goal in life. <laughs> oh, it so is. It so is. So what you were doing is really gaming the game, but mm -hmm. they knew that you could game the game. So it was kind of a stalemate. You're both doing the max. You're both maximizing each other. Yeah, but there's a point where I realized that that there was no point to to continuing. So, like, there was a period probably I should have stopped earlier, but the escapist in me wanted to just keep playing. And up until the time where I got my, I think, my license, I kept going and then stopped. Because I said, you there's other parts of life. It, though. I mean, it, being good at something is a, a feeling unto itself. Like That's true. Is playing, is playing a musical instrument escapist? I definitely think so. I don't because you can get better at it, and I don't find that to be a diminishing quality. Like I find that to be a soothing. It's almost like exemplary. doing a, a mantra or going like yeah, doing yoga or something. An exemplary quality. I think that's a good quality for a person to have. Like I don't look at someone necessarily who could put a hundred hours into a video game as like a good quality. I'm not like, oh, he must be a good person. He put over a hundred hours in EverQuest, and this might be a weird prejudice on my part. Because I never played EverQuest, mm -hmm. but then I look and someone's like, "Ah, oh, dude, I'm really good at guitar." And I'm like, "Are you?" And he's like, "Yeah, like I can play." And he names a bunch of things. I'm like, "Ah, oh, he's a good dude." And I'm not sure why I think that way because there's no logical reason. You know what I mean? It's just because people are in the same vein as you that you favor them, right? So really, I just favor anyone who does the stuff I do. Hmm. There is it's a piece that comes with playing guitar and bass and musical instruments because there's a. True. A resonance. I'll say the resonance is there that you're you have a feedback. Ooh, musical man, a feedback here with two music terms at once. <laughs> guy. You're you're feeling it throughout your body, what you're doing. So there's a there's there's something like subliminal there that makes you happy when you're playing an instrument and you could give that to other people. Video game you can't really also, give it to other people. Right. Music maybe is a um, language, I guess. Mm hmm Yeah. That you can speak with other people. Video game is but to a lesser extent, maybe? Definitely not back extent. then. Maybe now it is. It's a language you can yeah. share and be social. You can be social on a level that's equivalent to what we're doing now in a video sure. game. But back 20 years ago, you couldn't do that at all. There's no way you could have video, audio, discussions. None of that existed. I just, I just keep coming back to the thought that escapism ultimately is just getting away from life and whether it's video games or not so do you have like, people think... mm -hmm. do you have people that go on vacation and they hype up vacation you're mostly men right in your in your your business i get that from yeah. a lot of women yeah, in the yeah, office yeah. they get so excited about going someplace where i just yeah, like women here like count down for like nine months when they're going to like let's say offshore. yeah offshore or someplace random right. And I don't feel that way about going places. I think it's cool, but I don't. Right, I'm not no. like super excited to go anywhere. I'm just I'm happy here. Escapism? I think it is, and I don't know why it's different for some people that they have like a wanderlust for searching out places. 
experiencing right. the world. I mean, I understand it's understandable, but in another right. another sense, it makes no sense at all because it doesn't peace. It doesn't bring peace to you. You just you could see it in other ways and not have to go there and stand there and pretend like you are right. part of the society. I guess, I guess what we run into then is that someone could say the same thing about your escapisms. Mm-hmm. Mine, someone else's. Because really, if someone asked me. What does it get you playing Clash of Clans? I'll be like, nothing. Some fun? I don't know. Kills time? Makes me feel something that's not the drudge of life? I don't know. Something hidden? Something that you can control? Yeah. It's also a community. It's nice being part of a different community. Yeah, I agree. Have you ever been in a... People who start... Secret community? (laughs) Secret community. What was that bloodsucker vampire community? Uh, those people, man, they were some creepos. <laughs> yeah. Now, have you ever been in a situation where you didn't want to be? Like, I, freshman year, I was in a dorm room with a guy that uh, was a little bit off kilter, and he was like, mm-hmm. in the middle of the night, he'd like scream at his girlfriend on the phone, and I was just like, this, this ain't gonna work. Like three months in, I was like, I need to escape from this damn room, and I did. Uh-huh. But before that, I used to go out and. Just drink, just get out, just do something else because I couldn't stand being in that room. Didn't want to be in there. Weird. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. I guess that's an escapism, quite literally. Yeah, and that's the only time my life has been poor, you know? Like, the baseline of life is having to deal with something that's just completely shitty. And I, for other people that have shitty environments that they grew up in and, like, persisted, I can't imagine what life is for them and how they escape from like their abuse or their alcoholism or other things that they might not even know. Drink a lot of people do. There's so many different ways, I guess. Relieve stress, like they smoke a cigarette. Detail. Yeah, smoke cigarettes. Most of them are vices, I guess. It's weird. There's like this blurring line between vice and hobby. It's true. If you're good at it, it's not a vice. <laughs> well, if you're terrible at it. If you're really, yeah, but if you're really good at cigarettes, you think someone would be like, "That's his hobby." <laughs> he just flicks them around. You could blow smoke rings. I mean, people are yeah. impressed by people who can blow crazy smoke so, rings. So are those people are like, like he has a vice? They're like, no, he has a great hobby. <laughs> He's incredible. He uses all natural smoke, so it doesn't give him cancer. Hmm. Mm. Still will probably. That's another aspect, though, is that if you're in, if you're really in deep in something, you understand it better than most people. So mm-hmm. that's a chance for you to actually improve upon it, to learn from it, and maybe even build a business or be successful in life if you've Bro. delved into something really deep. If not, make a connection in that network. You know, True. if you're one of the best EverQuest players in the world, by chance, your Fortune 500 company boss is in EverQuest, and you just happen to drop it, and you're like, <gasps> You both like touch fingers. You're like, ding, hundreds of hours, hundreds. Yeah, it could move you through life. You could be successful just because you wasted time doing something that someone else enjoyed. That's very true. It's weird. Yeah. Hmm. Do you think I read something that people think dreams are an escapist thing? Not like sleep, dreams themselves. That you, so that when you're dreaming while you're sleeping, you're thinking of things that allow you to escape your normal life. Yeah, that like, was a, a theory. I don't know that I buy into it because I don't. I don't think I can control my dreams at all. I know they talk about lucid dreaming and all that. Here's another crazy thing: How does your brain know what it feels like to fly? It's, it takes every time you've jumped and just magnifies that falling <laughs> feeling. Uh, it's got it's different. How about um breathing underwater or uh going through walls in a dream or uh being in two places at once or like all that stuff because you can kind of feel that in dreams I feel like, and I don't know what baseline to base it against. So I guess I don't know if that's really how it feels, but that's interesting. Can your brain? Do you think you up any? Most of your dreams start off in places that you already know, so that it's probably starting from a basis of like you're sitting at your desk, you know exactly how that feels like. Mm -hmm. And it starts to tilt and shift so that it's like it's no longer that place or that feeling or that sense. It's exploring. I think your your mind is exploring what the possibilities are. I think so. That's why I don't think I can control it. It's just kind of moving around in whatever direction it feels like or wants to or is 
not used to. Maybe it's being pliable or something. Hmm. A weird question though is, so if you can figure out what flying is, here, is your brain already hardwired to experience every sensation or every feeling? If it, like, the, the possibility is there to feel something? Yeah. yeah. Like, like, could I know what it's like to um, conduct the symphony? to the utmost and like move all my hand motions and then hear the audience roar. Like, do I already have that built into me where I would know what that feels like? I mean, to successfully conduct an or orchestra, how yeah. would you know that beforehand, how it feels? Yeah. Do you think it would feel like everything else? Like if you were super successful in every field that it would start to feel the same, regardless Probably of what you were doing? Because, because think of what you do. It's repetition. Didn't we say mastery of a thing is like hundreds of hours. 10,000 hours. 10,000 hours. So if you did something for 10,000 hours, you don't even feel it anymore. You kind of escape it. You you're do. Your escape. You're, you're skipping over the parts that are boring, and then your brain can focus on the things that can make it creative and better. Hmm. I would argue it's actually focusing on the boring parts and just getting better at them. Like you figure out how to turn it into a video game and just beat the easy parts, kind of. Well, you have a sequence... Effect. I feel like your brain takes over for like a sequence of 10 things and then like there's another layer that like takes those 10 things and starts shuffling them around, try to eliminate one of them or make them so you can do them in parallel or maybe they fit together at a the certain same time or faster or something. Yeah. It's possible. I don't know. We're just thinking about that. Why? Hmm. Who knows? <laughs> and what I was going to get into a little bit is how is looking at art escapism i think it is so the, for certain people for the not for so, others yeah the, i do have art in my house that i didn't talk about in a previous episode mm, so I, I have episode. i have a lot of movie posters because i think they're cool but they don't really they bring me back to the movie which doesn't really bring me back to anywhere the ones that i associate an aesthetic to a sensation to are the ones that are like they remind me of things when i was younger like a lot of like the pathways to water like I have multiple pictures of like a bridge over water or like a pathway on the sand or like a, a little like wooden path over a bog or something. They all remind me of happiness because it reminds me of a place I went to when I was younger on the beach with all my cousins. We'd all get together and go to this one house and it had a nice long walkway down to the beach. A very unique walkway. So you're not seeing the bog when you see the bog or whatever? No. And a bridge? Well, I've never been to the, the place in the picture. Right, right, in the picture. Yeah. The painting, whatever it is. Yeah. Is that I feel the wooden are? boards. Yeah, I feel the wooden boards of that of that beach house. I'm running down that beach house, going to play in the sand and build a castle with my cousins. That's what I feel. Well, here's a crazy thought. Picture yourself running down these beach boards at the old house you went to. Mm -hmm. Are you 100% sure you really ran like you even are remembering it? Like the exact steps? Did you land on the boards you're remembering? Like where your cousins were exactly where they were? Or is it kind of, it's made up too, isn't it? A little bit? The one thing I can feel is like the texture of the boards on my feet, my bare feet. Mm -hmm. I don't know how fast I was going or who was with me, but that texture but is imprinted. It, you're running and you're... Yeah. Well, part of that is like the Hollywood. You're laughing and giggling and everyone's hey, running with you. Isn't, and... that, isn't that weird though that even your memory is a little fake? It's, it's skewed, way, yeah. But you can you can definitely remember the texture. It's like Hollywood is implanting a mm -hmm. way to escape in your brain so that you're happy. Let's say you never saw a Hollywood movie ever. Do you think you would remember it like that? I don't know. Things would get a little blurry. Right. Would you believe so it you would... a certain way? So you... I think you have to remember it complete. You can't remember it blurry. So your brain fills in the blanks. And like we said, because of Hollywood, you kind of fill it in happy, smiling while you're running and all that. Yeah, but 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 if it weren't for Hollywood, you would still probably have to fill it in. What would you fill it in with? You frowning, <laughs> run <laughs> slowly, like, slogging along. It was like just, I don't know. I'd be interested to do that study on someone. We don't let them watch any movies in Hollywood, which is a bunch of perverts anyway. And um, <laughs> just want to do that aside. <laughs> yeah, that you're talking about Harvey Harvey. Oh, uh, disgusting. I forget his name. Weinstein. 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 No. 
whining kids, as we call them. Yep. Whining women. Hmm? Yeah. Anyway, just some weird stuff that your brain pulls tricks on you when you're trying to escape. Yeah. Do you have any paintings yourself that you use to escape? <laughs> Vignettes, maybe? No, I feel like... Uh, I look at old pictures sometimes. I think they're cool. But that's not hmm. art, per se. That's more Do you of think... a... That's, I remember directly, I guess. So our parents have this thing about like photo albums and capturing things and getting people together. Yeah, photo albums. Do you yeah. think they do that because they can't remember themselves? They're trying to escape to memories they can't remember, so they make you stand in one place, we'll take a photo of you, and I can look at it so I can remember this moment because it was a happy moment? Yeah, 100%. Only because I'm like 30 and I could barely remember things from when I was 5 and 7 exactly. It gets scarier probably as you're older and you only remember the last 10, maybe 5 years. Really? Honestly? probably remember less than that if you think about it right so maybe their version of escapism is remembering the past which is not real anymore so they i don't know make photo albums and check facebook instagram photos are real you can't deny a photo you know what i mean that's the true light bounced off our bodies came back to the camera lens exactly like that there's nothing lie there mm -hmm. i don't know what happened the second before the second after the rest of that day the rest of that year but i do know in that second that millisecond that was captured that was real right yeah interesting weird hmm. i did want to bring up a couple key terms for us sure there are a little bit about weird emotions you can get in your brain oh okay. that aren't regular emotions not like i'm happy i'm sad um i'm killing your girlfriend touch on this one no <laughs> What is it? It's probably a feeling. It probably yeah. is. Um, I touched on one in a previous episode. Um, I didn't realize it had a name. It's that feeling when you're really high up, and um, you think, uh, oh, I feel like if I jumped, you're gonna fall off the edge. Driving along a real narrow area, not that you're gonna fall, that you want to fall a little bit. Hmm. I don't get that feeling. I get the or, feeling that I'm or, not balanced. I'm imbalanced. Well, that that that'll happen too. I think it's all related. The other one, like, have you ever felt like um? If you're on a really narrow bridge or something, really high up or something, like there's in your head, you're like, I could just swerve left as hard as I could, and this whole thing would go over and everyone would be dead. It would finish. Game over. Yes. You anyway, died. It's called <clears throat> Lapel de Vide. Lapel de Vide. Mm -hmm. Call of the Void. Huh. The call of the Void. Anyway, it's. I think it's your brain. Like if you're on train. You're right above the, the train tracks and it's ready to come and you just think, you know, I could push someone right now or I could jump right in front of it and it would just it would obliterate me. It's a little bit of escapism because that's the opposite of what you're doing with your day-to-day -day life. It's the opposite of every instinct you have. It's just a weird thing where like you're like, yeah, I don't step in front of a moving train or a car or jump off a cliff. But your brain is like, what if you did? <laughs> And you're like, you think about it for a second. You're like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's like one of those classic people that are trying to jump off a bridge, but when they jump, they actually grab the bridge. They're like holding on, and they, their brain doesn't yeah. let them. Like it, it tries right. to, and then it's like, nope, <laughs> you can't, you can't really yeah. do this. Right. This is the yeah, Matrix. I wouldn't be able to. Mm -hmm. You're a part of the Matrix. Want to hear a cool one? Yeah. Another brain feeling. It's called a wombuck. A wombuck. It's only, only native to Papua New Guinea. Okay. They must have crazy house guests. So when your house guests come over, you have to invite them in. You have to let them use their amenities. You have to let them live their life. Sometimes they stay for one, two days, whatever. They're loud, obnoxious. It's crazy. They ruin your house. There's furniture everywhere. They trip over things. They pee on things. Like The house guests are the worst there. After 24, 48, 58, 72 hours, they leave. And there's an emptiness in your house that they have a word for, a wombok. I like it's that word. The emptiness of the house. I felt this right after uh, college. The first, yeah, there you yeah go. no, the second year of college when I spent. You're like, whoa! I've well, been trying to get these people to leave for how long, and now it's so empty. <laughs> so, do you know what they do to get rid of a wombuck? There's a remedy. They place a bowl. Oh, there is. This will work. They place a bowl of water, hot water, boiled water, right in the middle of the hut. They let it sit overnight, the night that everyone leaves, and in the morning, the whole family gets up. They take the water outside. It absorbs all that old that energy of emptiness. <laughs> that doesn't and throw work. Throw it into the trees. 
it works. Have you ever tried it? I take a dump right in the middle of that Wombok water. <laughs> I'm tired of your like presence. I get that feeling with my roommate in college, the second year, when everyone leaves for that, that summer after you've been yeah, 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 yeah. together for so long. I mean, there's a bond there that you don't even realize is building up incrementally. Right, they're annoying. They're whatever. Yeah. But then when they're gone, you're like, you could feel that immediately when that person's gone. You're just like, whoa, my mm -hmm. life just changed. And it's, it's powerful. My next word is Illinks. Illinks. I-L-I-N-X. Illinks. It's a strange excitement for destruction. It's like a normal organized man. He's walking by and no one's around. He kicks over a tiny recycle bin just because he wants to do it. I get this for uh, fire alarms. Oh, I always want to hit a fire a alarm. Yeah. You just feel like, why? Not because... I don't know. It's like you're not supposed like, to. Uh -huh. A call of the wild, but it's not like murder someone. It's usually something trivial. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are they really going to care if I pull a fire alarm? I'm, I want to see like water gushing from the ceiling and <laughs> yeah, everyone running, well. thinking it's a real fire. That's excitement right there, but it's harmless excitement for the most part, mm -hmm. unless people injure themselves somehow. Oh, that's great. Here's one I'm going to pronounce right. <sighs> Coco Capu. Coco Capu. No, I'm not going to try that. Coco Capu. Coco Capu. Coco Anyway, it's a feeling of homesickness for a place you've never visited. Wow, I don't they say like, know that I They say like the that. Irish will get this. Why? If you were born in America, it's like a desire to visit the homeland. Like you want to go back to Ireland. Like, so I'm here, there's like. I'm making. Uh, I'm totally. That's a different. The grapes song. of wrath. I don't know what song it was, but it's either way. It's a battle it's hymn. It's a battle hymn. Yeah, it was a battle hymn, but it was not the right one. And um, <clears throat> like I think you can look here in your eye. Could be. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Two by two, they sound yeah. like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm part Irish and part Polish. I think it would be cool to visit there, but I don't think that I you don't, you don't have an essence. Oh, you don't feel sometimes in the air? The one thing I do know is that I'm attracted to Irish and Polish women, so I'm pretty sure I'd be happy there. Hmm. It's a weird... I guess it's That's genetic. Fun. Pheromones are in sync. That's weird. I guess so. How about... Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, pronoia. Is that like paranoia? But the opposite. You love being... You think... No. You have this weird, unsettling, creeping suspicion that people are out to help you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best one. Bro, no, yeah. <laughs> Just these people creeping up on you and they're like, it's a breakfast. And you're like, <laughs> I made you cinnamon toast crunch. <laughs> yeah. uh, ah, that new job opening is available, Steven. Come get your job opening, Steven. And it's like, I was expecting that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Do I found yeah. some money on the ground? It's obviously not mine. Would you like it? <laughs> Would you like it? It's <laughs> for you. Everything's for you. Oh, thank you. Th th thanks. I think you almost want bad things to happen to you. I guess. <laughs> so weird. That's that's the word of the podcast. I think pro noia. Oh, yeah, yeah, I could see yeah. like the dumbass being that way. He thinks yeah, everything's gonna work out, so he's like, "Oh, that's fantastic." It's like. She died in front of me. What do you mean? He's like, <laughs> it's meant to happen. It's a, there's a reason for it. Be happy. There's a reason. It's beautiful. <laughs> and lastly, I didn't write everything down, but the, the last one was called Torschluss Panik. Torschluss Torsch Panik? That sounds like a Russian word. I think it was German. It might have been Torschluss, Torschluss Panik. Okay. It's uh, life is passing you by. The sands of time are slipping away. You're very panicky. Hmm. Sometimes this will just happen at random. Midlife crisis. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Except that I, I think this can happen at any point in your life. Hmm. In brains of sand. I have to go real quick. I have to. I haven't accomplished enough. Oh my god! I haven't done this my today. I have to job interview tomorrow. Oh my god. Hmm. I understand I that. Do whatever. People feel stuck in one place and they feel like they haven't done enough. I don't know what you could do to feel like you've done enough though. 
Torschlepanik. <clears throat> well, what's interesting is if I think of all of these words we just described and all this escapism we were talking about earlier. Those are the fears. If I told you you were on a roller coaster, but the roller coaster was a straight line, and it was just a damn ride, and it started here, and you were strapped in. When and does it, it end? To here, and it <laughs> ended. Like, that would be extremely boring, extremely weird, extremely neurotic, extremely... I don't think you could live that way. You want the ups and downs to feel some meaning, some power, some purpose. Uh, you need to... Even feedback. Even pretend, you would Resonance. need to create fears you got to create feelings you got to create escapes you want to go left i want to go right i want to go up i want to go down i want to go backwards a little bit i want to freeze time i want to speed up i want to slow down but ultimately i mean you're still moving along that track to the end it's i guess it's unsettling do you think people create their own phobias so that they can feel that emotion why not catch 22 had dunbar my favorite character of all I forget what his... I, I mean, I remember Dunbar, but I don't remember. He was cultivating it. boredom. He would just stare at the ceiling and not talk to anyone or play any card games or engage in any fun that anyone else was having at the hospital. And they asked why. And Dunbar said, I want to stay bored. And they said, why? He said, because when you're bored, life passes you by much, much slower. Oh, I remember Every that. hour drags like a day. Every minute is an hour. Every he, this is this. He had a philia, a philia of life. He did, because he was afraid if he enjoyed life, it would just pass him by. Next thing you know, he said, do you remember the first bra you unhooked? You were 13. Mm. Remember the first kiss? The exact quote. First kiss you had. First time you uh, laid eyes on a woman. First time you, you learned how to talk and walk and play sports with your little friends. You blink and it's over. You blink and you're here. You're blinking. Right now, we're on the verge of death. Any minute, we could be dead. And I just want to sit here and be as bored as can be and let the minutes turn to hours and the hours turn to days. And these days I have left, turn them into friggin' months. He was reveling in the past. Weird. Who died uh, in that book, Catch-22, Joseph wow. Heller? There was a, a guy who died uh, while he was on like a raft or something and a plane flew too yeah, low. Yeah, that was a... Uh, the whole... Uh, the whole thing was that the guy was happy and excited. He was cheering on the plane as it came. bloody hits. Yeah. Was the phrase. He got whacked by the propeller as it was like three feet off the ground. Sliced him in half. Kid Samson. Please yes. Cut in half. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, Doc Danica. It's a two name. We'll have to do a correction for the episode. Yeah. But anyway, do you know what he did after he looked back and realized he cut Kid Samson in half? No, I don't remember the part. He turned back towards the nearest mountain, said – he didn't say it, but everyone could hear him say it in the way he drove his plane. The way his plane drove, it said, oh, well, what the hell? And he drove into the mountain, just killed himself. Huh. Crazy, right? Because of the accident? Because he yeah, couldn't he, bear Yeah, he was going to get busted, dude. He wasn't supposed to drive that low and that close to the civilians while they were having fun. Hmm. So it was 100% his fault. Because it was just a joyride, right? Yep. It was an escape. He was pulling the old maverick and goose, pulling down. Uh, yeah. Do we have permission? Bye bye. So that brings That's me to. That's a negative ghost rider. That brings me to retirement. Some people use oh! retirement as an escape, and they live with a life that's how many years? You know, 20 to 63, 40. 43 or more years of maybe bullshit to retire in a life that, you know, once you're 63, you're not who you were when you were True. 30 or 20 or even 40. So, like, people buy into that because I don't know why. Well, why why don't you think that they can't do something for 40 years because it would make them go crazy? I'm thinking that the vision that they have in their heads of what they will do when they retire is oh, completely different, different than, than what, what they can do. years down that road, right? Yeah. Right. We're going to travel the world and sell gypsies butter from a can. Going to turn that can into butter. Yep. I don't know. Weird. So that's like, a, that's an escapist mentality, though. If you if you really don't like your job, but you're set 30 years, so I'm just going to retire and be happy doing this thing. That thing is like probably not going to make you happy. Yeah, if you go to... Yeah, if you go to an... 
an island resort or go cruising like you think right that's away from everybody that would be a weird thing to do yeah so really the the goal should be to enjoy right now which is what european countries do they enjoy the people that are near them and they don't think about retirement as much or so is that an american issue i have no idea i really have nothing to do with i don't know i'm not in america we sell a ton of dreams we try to sell as many dreams and fears as possible i think hmm. a cool way to put it i never thought of it like that i wouldn't disagree with it at all yeah hmm. so there's one more form of escapism that we haven't talked about yet what virtual virtual reality Ah, oh, huh. I think it's getting bigger. I don't think it's really there yet, is it? Yeah, I don't think it's quite there. I did watch Ready Player One, which has like an entire oh, world. I, I kind of liked it. There are parts that didn't, mm-hmm. like there's a, a level that's probably meant for people who are like 30 to 40. And there's a level that's meant for like maybe kids, but it switches back and forth, which makes it kind of awkward. Plus it's illogical because all these people are plugged into some virtual world and they're like running around in the real world like they're not going to collide or hurt each other or just say we're done with this so there is like second life which is kind of like ready player one second life is a real game where you can enter in and buy digital items and live life in a digital world do they have sex in that game i mean they probably (laughs) we are having sex right now Uh, as i type (laughs) I will no stick my river in you and uh, some housewife action in there. Some lonely housewife action. Hell yeah. I don't know. I could see people living life in that second life and feeling like it's more real than their first life. I could see a because lot of that. Power almost because they have more decisions. They're richer in this life in a way. I don't think you can get hurt in the second life. So there's only positives. But that seems so fake after you say it like that. Here's a question for you. So um, I'm utilitarian, meaning I think the greater good for the greater amount of people is Mm -hmm. good. How much is one old person worth? If they're 70 years old, how many young people would you say? How many more deets? uh, If they're 23 years old, how many many do you save? Two. So if you, okay, so 60 something, 70. Sorry. Sorry, old person. You're worth three young people. No, no, other way around. Three young people are... Three old people are worth a young person. There we go, there we go. Yeah. Okay. That's, yeah, yeah, that's correct. That's the reverse of what I would think, is that no, an old person is closer to death. Yeah, a young person's worth more. Oh, am I saying it backwards? Yeah. Three old, No, three old people is worth one young person. Okay, yeah, yeah, you're saying it right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Just, clear, just clarify it. Yeah. So here's the idea anyway. Most stuff I'm utilitarian. The old question was, okay then, um, let's say you find out everyone's plugged into a matrix. Machines using them for energy. I'm gonna really just use the matrix, it's pretty easy. You're a battery. They use you like a giant battery. You're plugged in, but your brain is entirely hooked up to this fake world and you're having a good time in this fake world. Like everyone's feeling pretty good. I mean there's some people who are a little miserable, but most it's like life right now. Most people are fairly happy. They don't know that their batteries, whatever. Mm-hmm. Is it moral if you had the decision to let everyone sit like that? What would you do? Are you so you're saying mm-hmm. are you going to escape the world to save them, or are you going to be like uh, Cipher, Joe Pantolano, who's going to go back into the Matrix world and live it like it's the real world? Second Life. Oh, the dude, Cypher. Okay. Cypher. Right, sorry, you confused me. I didn't know, and you used his real name. You threw me off. Okay. Yeah, yeah the dude, Cypher. Would you, which is a more, which is morally a better thing to do? Which should you do? If there was another real, real or world on top of this one, mm-hmm. would you go to it? I mean, you're, if it, it you would be Let's escaping it. Guaranteed would be pretty miserable. Yeah, you would, yeah, definitely. The way they bring you back, if it's the Matrix. Yeah. But you'd be essentially escaping real life if you were trying to live this life, right? So if there was a one one that was more painful but real, shouldn't you go back to that unless you're an escapist? Yes. I don't know. How many layers are there? How painful is a layer beyond that? I don't know. I feel like you'd be bonded with the people who were there, 
Like if this wasn't a solo right. mission and other people decided the same thing as you, you would definitely have a bonding moment with them because you decided all together to do this one thing. You'd be a true a binding force. Which I think would make you happy in a really weird I think way. So. Right. There's something about the struggle. Mm-hmm. So a person's happiness isn't necessarily their joy. Am I using the right term? Their bliss isn't their happiness or their... I want to separate excitement fake and entertained. Kind of, yeah. Right, there's an excitement, entertainment. is not the same as happiness. We could do a whole episode on that. But just... Yeah. True happiness. Is there's like a subtle true. happiness that you can't take away from people. There's a, a joy right. that's like inside of them that will never die that's that's happiness getting your way is not the way to get that happiness almost it's almost like counterintuitive happiness yeah the easy way is not going to gain you happiness most of the time yeah struggling going against it kind of brings its own happiness which is a human condition i think it keeps us waffling keeps humans from stagnating uh, maybe that's part of escapism. We we want to escape. We want to come back. We want to suffer. We want to do good. We want to be happy. We're not happy enough. We get bored. Do you think that's people in different robots will never take us over? We get bored. <laughs> we're too weird and creative and different. Right. And we're not happy when we're happy. Can you imagine <laughs> a robot, a robot like, trying to like corral us all? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're throwing papers near and like this is bullshit. <laughs> These people are, we give them everything that makes humans happy, and they're not happy. They want something else. I can't explain it. Humans are bastards. So, do you think people in first world countries escape more or less than people in like third world countries, where like the I conditions think, are horrible? I would think more. But so I don't know. The third world countries people, they escape more no, than I think the first, the first world because they're bored escape because more. they have more time to escape. And because they have more escapes. They're aware like of the possibilities. Like VR. Yeah. No, no. Like, they have more escapes. Like That's true. You go to a third world country, they don't have VR. They don't have a movie in every corner. They don't have Netflix. They don't have, like, eight TVs in their house. They don't have a cell phone that has 400 games. Like, they don't have any of that. They just have the people in front of them, which keeps right. them plugged in to the other people. I don't know. Hmm. Folks, <sighs> my brain's going to explode. I think we did a good job. I think I did. <laughs> I think we did. It was a good episode, I think. What yeah. did we cover? Oh boy. Escapism? Escapes? Daydreaming? Escapes? Daydreams? Alcohol, Night drugs, dreams. medication? Night dreams? Art? Folks. Art? Mm-hmm. College? Movies? Video games? Women? Third world countries? Music? Games? Broads? Midlife crises? Bimbos. Women? Retirement. Broads. I said broads. Because they're broads. <laughs> mm-hmm. <Yeah. laughs> Bring it back. Props. International Women's Props. Day. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's good. And a bunch of uh, terms from. Just a bunch of terms. We'd save that for another day. Yeah. Well, cool. Yeah. Good night. Thank, Thank you for listening. Good. Yeah. Everyone, don't escape real life, but if you do, escape it with us. Ooh. Good podcast. That'd be a great escape. Maybe the best escape. Folks, we friggin' like you. We like you. <laughs> <laughs>